For today's lesson, we will be discussing about the graphs of tangent and cotangent functions. So last time, we discussed about the graphs of cosecant and secant functions. So this time, we'll proceed with the last set, which is about tangent and cotangent function. So before I show you the graph of the tangent and cotangent functions, let's just recall some of the concepts related to tangent. As what we know, tangent of theta can be solved if we divide sine of theta by the cosine theta. And we can get cotangent theta if we divide the cosine theta by the sine theta. So as you can see here, sine and cosine is related with tangent and cotangent. And since we can solve tangent and cotangent using the sine and cosine, and by just div by dividing them, so we have to consider now the denominators for each. So for tangent, the denominator is cosine. For cotangent, the denominator is sine. Now it has something to do now later on with the graph. So we have to observe or to remember that the denominator for the tangent is cosine, and the denominator for the cotangent is the sine. So let me show you the graph of the tangent and cotangent functions. So again, this is our Cartesian plane. Let's put here first the graph of tangent x so this is the graph of our tangent so as you can see so there are still waves here now as what we recalled a while ago tangent can be solved if we divide sine by cosine so cosine has something to do with the graphs of the tangent so let's try to put here first the cosine x so this is the graph of cosine x now how is cosine related with tangent or how does it affect now the graph of tangent so since cosine is in the denominator of our tangent when we solve it so we have to take into consideration those values or those angles that makes the cosine zero because if the cosine is zero that means the tangent will be undefined because cosine is in the denominator so what are those angles that makes the cosine equal to zero so for example we have here negative pi over 2 so if this is the angle so the cosine, the corresponding cosine value is zero. So if the cosine is zero, if we will solve for the tangent, it the denominator now will be equal to zero. And as what we know, if the denominator is zero, that means it's undefined. So for negative pi over two, the tangent is undefined since its cosine value is equal to zero. Same as with pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, and so on. Now if we will put uh, lines for these particular values. Let's just put some here. There. So this lines here, this is where the value of the cosine is zero. And if the cosine is zero, that means the tangent is undefined. So what happens is that these values will not touch the graph or it will not be part of the graph of our tangent function because again the corresponding value here will be undefined. So these are now the restrictions that we have to take into consideration whenever we're graphing tangent functions. These values that makes our cosine zero because if cosine is zero, the denominator will be undefined. This applies uh, similarly with the graphs of cotangent. So but this time, we are taking into consideration the graph of sine. So this is our cotangent, so it's just the inverse of our tangent. Now, if we will put here the graph of sine x, remember, when we solve for cotangent, we are dividing cosine by sine. So that means the sine now is in the denominator. And if the sine is in the denominator, those angles that produces a sine value that is equal to zero should be omitted from the graph of our cotangent because it will make our cotangent undefined. So those values are, let's say, zero, pi, 2 pi and so on. So let's try to again put the lines here. So let's put here 0, x equals pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. There. So these lines here, these are now the restrictions for our graph of cotangent. So this means um, our graph for cotangent should not pass these points because it will make our cotangent undefined since their sine value is already equal to zero. So that is how our sine and cosine is related with the graphs of tangent and cotangent. So it now affects the graph of our uh, tangent and cotangent because there are some values that will make 
the tangent and cotangent undefined. Now, for the general equation of our tangent and cotangent, so it's the same as with the first four functions that we discussed. So, we still have the A, B, C, and D, and they still play the same role in the graphs of our functions. Now, let's discuss the properties of our tangent and cotangent functions. First is with the domain. Now, the domain for our cotangent and tangent follows the same rule as like what we have for secant and cosecant. So, we still have to remove those values that will make our tangent and cotangent undefined. As what was shown a while ago uh, during our discussion with the graphs. So, in order to solve for the domain of cotangent, we have to remove those values that makes our sign equal to zero. Because again, if sign is zero for cotangent, the cotangent now will become undefined. So, to solve for the domain, this is the one that we will use. Again, this is similar with what we had for uh, secant and cosecant. So, we still have x is element of real number. We're in x is not equal to c plus k pi over absolute value of b where k is element of integer so this is the formula that we will use in order to write the domain of our cotangent for our tangent so it's the other uh, other equation that we know uh, so for tangent we have to remove those values that makes the cosine equal to zero because if cosine is zero the tangent will become undefined so we have x is element of real number such that x is not equal to c plus k pi over 2 times absolute value of b where k is an odd integer so again this is just the same formula that we used for the secant and cosecant so you already know uh, how to use these formulas for the range, so there's no restriction, both for cotangent and tangent, the range will be set of all real numbers, or from negative infinity to positive infinity. Because as you can see, um, all the places in our Cartesian plane or coordinate plane has the graph. So it extends on the positive infinity and also on the negative infinity. Now for this one, uh, we solve for B or identify B. B is 3 fourths c is this time c is negative pi over 4 because originally our equation is x minus c so substitute this to our formula we have x is element of real number such that x is not equal to and c is negative pi over 4 plus and then you have k and then pi over this time we'll be just using absolute value of b so absolute value of 3 over 4 and then k is element of integer and then all you have to do is to simplify this so we have uh, x is element of real number such that x is not equal to negative pi over 4 and then this one you get the reciprocal of our uh, denominator and then multiply it to the numerator so there we have 4k pi over 3 so this will be plus 4k and then pi over 3 where k is element of integer so again this is our domain so as long as you know the formula to use you know how to simplify uh, then you can already identify the domain and range and then for our range is it is just set of real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity so for our tangent and cotangent functions we still have the amplitude so we will be looking at the absolute value of a so this makes the graphs of the tangent and cotangent functions stretch or shrink vertically so the absolute value of a will still be the amplitude of our function and it will determine how our graph behaves vertically. So if absolute value of A is less than 1, so the graphs shrink vertically. If absolute value of A is greater than 1, the graphs stretch vertically. So how does it look like? So for example, I have here the set of graphs. So here, I have uh, y is equal to tangent x, 2 tangent x, 3 tangent x. So as the value of x increases, our graph stretches vertically. So 
Of course, if you stretch the graph, so it will lose some of its curves. So that's why this is the behavior that's happening here. Same as with our cotangent. And then we also have the period for our tangent and cotangent function. If absolute value of b is greater than 1, the graphs shrink horizontally. Now, if uh, absolute value of b is between 0 and 1, the graphs stretch horizontally. When you say shrink horizontally, so that means the uh, the graphs are like this so it has now a shorter period but if the graphs stretch horizontally so it's like this something like this so the graphs are wide wider and for the period of both the cotangent and tangent we will be using the formula pi over absolute value of b so this is the formula that we will use if we will be solving for the period of both the tangent and cotangent now let's solve for the amplitude and period of the following function so let's use this so for the amplitude it's just the absolute value of a so in this case a is one third so absolute value of one third so that is just one third so that is the amplitude of our function for the period it's pi over absolute value of b now our b is three fourths so pi over absolute value of three fourths so you have to multiply again the denominator the reciprocal of the denominator by the numerator so we have pi times four over three or that will give us 4 pi over 3 as the period of our function. Another example, uh, let's say we have this function. So for the amplitude, it is absolute value of 3 or that is just 3. So that will be your amplitude. For the period, it's pi over absolute value of b. Our b is 2. So absolute value of 2. So we have here pi over 2 as the period of this given function. So that is how you solve for the amplitude and period. You just have to look at absolute value of A for the amplitude. And for the period for both cotangent and tangent, you're using um, pi over absolute value of B. And lastly is for the asymptotes. So same as with our secant and cosecant. The equation for the asymptotes is already the one that we use for the domain. So we will just be applying the same rule here. So for cotangent or the asymptotes of cotangent, so that will be x is equal to c plus k pi over absolute value of b, where k is element of integer. So asymptote means these are the restricted values for our cotangent because this makes our uh, function undefined. And for our tangent, so we'll be using the same formula, x is equal to c plus k and then pi over 2 absolute value of b and k is an odd integer. So actually, we already saw for the uh, asymptotes. So let's just have this one right here. Let's say I want to solve for the asymptote or the equation of the asymptotes of this function. So that will be x equal, since this is cotangent, c plus k pi over absolute value of b where k is element of integer so this is the one that we will use so we have x equals then c here is negative pi over 4 we already identified that a while ago plus k and then you have the pi over our b is 3 fourths so absolute value of 3 fourths and k element of integers so you multiply again the reciprocal of 3 fourths to the numerator so therefore we have negative pi over 4 plus 4 k pi over 3 where k is element of integer so again that's how you solve for the asymptotes of the function now let's try to identify the domain range period and asymptotes of the following function so let's start with y equals one half tangent 2x so let's identify first the values of a b and c so a here is one half b is a two that's the coefficient of our x and then c is a zero now let's substitute it to our uh, equation or formula so since it's tangent so we have x is element of real number such that x is not equal to then we have c is zero 
plus k and then pi over uh, 2 times absolute value of 2 where k is an odd integer. So this is the formula that we're using since the given function is tangent. Then just simplify this. So we have x is element of real number such that x is not equal to, so let's already remove 0. So we have k pi over 4 where k is an odd integer. And then for the range, it's just a set of all real numbers or from negative infinity to positive infinity. For our amplitude, it's the absolute value of A. So that is absolute value of 1 half or 1 half. For the period, it's pi over absolute value of B. So absolute value of our B is 2, so 2 here. Simplify this, pi over 2. And for our asymptotes, you're just going to get this part here of our uh, domain. So that will be x is equal to k pi over 4, where k is an odd integer. So these are now the parts of our uh, function. So that is how you solve for the parts of the function. Domain range, amplitude period, and asymptotes. Let's just have one last example. Y is equal to 2 cotangent x over 3. So let's identify A. A is a 2. Our B, this is the coefficient of x. So since this is x over 3, that means B is 1 third. And then C is still 0. And then, let's substitute it to our formula. So, we have for the domain, x is element of real number, such that x is not equal to c. Our c is 0. Plus, and then you have k pi over, this is cotangent, so we'll just have to put here absolute value of b on the denominator. And k is element of integer. Then, simplify this. We have x is element of a real number such that x is not equal to and then multiply now the reciprocal of one third to the numerator. So you will get there 3k pi. And then we have k is element of integer. So this is now the domain of our function. For our range, so again, this is just from negative infinity to positive infinity. Nothing changes. For our amplitude, absolute value of A, A is 2. So this is equal to 2. For our period, it's pi over absolute value of B. So our B is 1 third. So, you multiply the reciprocal of 1 third to pi. So, that is pi times 3 or 3 pi. And then lastly, for our asymptote, we're just getting the part of this in our domain. So, that will be x is equal to 3k pi, where k is element of integer. So, this is now the asymptote of the given function. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about the graphs of tangent and cotangent functions and see you next time.